Hello, and thank you for joining me again on one of my random Linux walkthrough videos where I just kind of try out a distribution that I've never tried and just see what I like about it, I guess, or if I don't like anything about it. This one is called Fat Dog Linux, <laughs> Fat Dog 64 Linux. And I, it came up because I searched for Puppy Linux, which this is kind of like a fat version of it, I guess. And I used Puppy Linux as one of my first Linux distributions probably, oh gosh, it had to be close to 15 years ago maybe, something like that. And it, it blew my mind at the time. I remember just, you know, I think Windows XP was out, maybe Windows 7 was just coming out, I don't know. And I remember just thinking like, this is so fast. This is so fast on an average computer and it just blew my mind. That's where how Linux got me. You know, I was always a Windows user and, you know, I, I occasionally read about command line terminal Linux things just to get into it. But the Linux desktop at that time, I was just like, this is incredible. I've never seen anything like this. And it ran off of like a CD-ROM. <laughs> and that was so cool. And it could run in RAM. And I believe this one can as well. And right now I'm just running this off the live medium, um, you know, USB or whatever, uh, just ISO. And this is not installed. So this is kind of how it was intended to run. And it runs really well like this. But uh, you can also install it to disk, but I'm not going to do that today. It's just, it's not going to be my daily driver, at least that I know of yet. But this is something you would probably put on an older laptop uh, because it would run, it would run smoothly on it. I mean, maybe have some, you know, even something with four gigs of RAM, you could run the thing in RAM. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. But you can also just run it, you know, and it still runs quickly from what I understand. Now, let's see if it's anything like I remember, but more. <laughs> so when I was reading on their page... It says Fat Dog uh, 64 Linux is small, is a small yet versatile 64 bit multi user Linux distribution. I do not recall the other one being multi user. Maybe that's something new. Originally created as a fatter, they have in quotes, more built in applications derivative of Puppy Linux. So that's where it caught my eye because I remember Puppy Linux. And again, I haven't tried it in a long time, like actually tried it like how I used to use it. Fat Dog has grown to become an independent, mature 64-bit Linux distribution while keeping true to puppy Linux spirit. So that's small, fast, and efficient is what they say. At around 450 megabytes, <laughs> Fat Dog boots up to a complete desktop environment ready for use. Most applications needed for everyday use are already included. And that's where I, I, there was a lot. They listed a ton of apps, which I'm really surprised um, how quickly this loads. So now I'm clicking around. Let's see. Okay, I got, I got my, my correct screen on. But right here you got your... This is called OpenBox. Uh, the desktop manager, I believe, is what this is using. So it's not, you know, Mate. It's not Gnome. It's not KDE. It's not... What's the other one? Budgie. This is OpenBox. I, I think this is the... I, I, I could be saying this incorrectly, but whatever. It's fast. Uses a little amount of resources. <laughs> And uh, we're going to see what is included out of the box with this. So we got suspend. I don't want to accidentally click that. Uh, restart X. So you can restart the X server if something's acting up, I assume. It's got some fun. It's got, wow. So you already got some games here. Armaged, that's a, these are pretty uh, good amount of games for out of the box. Let's click GK Tetris. I mean, it launches as fast as I click it. It's just instant. So um, let's go to multimedia. We got VLC media player. That's, Usually one of the first things I install on any Linux distribution, so I don't have to do that. It's got AVI Demux, video editor, incredible, screencaster. Wow, this has got a lot of stuff. I'm already impressed. Even a CD burner, I don't really use those anymore, but if you have one, maybe you do backups to them. Um, it's still a viable solution, backing up to like maybe a Blu-ray disc or, you know, it can hold a lot of data and it's efficient. You can store them away and... That qualifies as a backup. So you got um, internet. Oh, Google Chrome. Not a fan, but also got Firefox. So there you go. That's cool. Maybe I'd install Brave as well. Uh, Pigeon. I haven't used that in, God, at least 10 years. Um, XMPP messengers. I think you could just plug them in there. I used. To, I think I used to log Google Chat into that, and, and it worked really well. But I, don't, I haven't used it in so long. But, of course, it launches really quickly. Let's see what it's got. There it is, XMPP. So Zephyr, simple, IRC. That's cool. I have used it for IRC in the past, but I just usually use an IRC client if I'm going to, you know, join a room. Google Talk. I'm not sure I'd use this anymore, but whatever. It's there. Cool. And, I mean, SeaMonkey Browser. That's another web browser. Okay, wow, there's a lot of web browsing. But that's always cool. If you want to, you know, you're having trouble loading a site, it never hurts to have a couple extra browsers to see if the site loads in those. 
It's got a BitTorrent client already. This is packed for a small distribution. Very impressive. This seems like it could be a good toolkit to have. Almost like a Hiren's Boot CD alternative. GFTP, X11 VNC server, Tiger VNC viewer. Wow. So you can connect to some maybe Ultra VNC or Tight VNC servers on another computer. Um, I know a lot of places that use that still. So, and it works. Uh, Fat Dog Quick App. So I'm guessing that might be just like web app links, something like that. Osmo. It's like a, is it a personal information manager? Osmo. Um, I remember hearing about it. Let's see. Notes. Yeah, notes contact. Okay, so it's something like that, right? Uh, we got Calculate. So the office, not there's not like an office drop down. It's just calculate, and then it has the apps that tend to be office apps. Like, so I guess there's not just an, an uh, like like a word processor is an under. I guess it's just document. Okay, so they got their own menus for everything. I I almost think like you just throw the office stuff under the office app because people are kind of used to seeing it there. I would think, but that's cool. Whatever you can you can change this. It's not a big deal. So calculate. You got LibreOffice Calc. Base. Let's see. Everything launches so quickly. I mean, this is impressive. Uh, let's close that bad boy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So documents. So let's go here. We got word processor. I really don't use that anymore, but you got some text, you know, notepad. I love leafpad. I haven't used that in a long time. Uh, 2004, 2010, whatever. It's a simple text editor and it works. It's got find and replace. What else do you need? Well, if you're a Linux person, you probably need a lot more of your text editor, but you could install that as well. Uh, we got puppy phone. It's like a, a, a SIP client. Yep, SIP client. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, people, people like their SIPs. They like to have some sipping. Sippy, sippy, zippy. Uh, we got Z uh, X... I don't know how, to, how, I've never known how to say this, but it's been around forever. It's a great little, I think, PDF notator. You can just kind of write over top of stuff, right? All right, all right? I remember you could write, yeah. It's just, you could draw stuff and then, yeah, export to PDF. Really cool, really a great program. Simple, but solid. Love it. These are, this is a great choice of software, except for Google Chrome, in my opinion. Get the fucking Google Chrome off there, please. Uh, we got um, MM View Folder Viewer. Is it, or is it supposed to be MM View? Like, mm, mm, mm. Cool. Wow, this, I, I've never used this. Commands? Okay. I'd have to tinker around with this. This is kind of cool. I, I, I mean, it looks just different. It's something, looks interesting anyways. Uh, so we got Document Viewer. That's Evince, I think. Is that what it's called? Um, weird little uh, bug here where I drag windows. And sometimes it'll... Is it even? Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, events. There it is. Events. Man, my memory's pretty good tonight for being how late it is. Um, we'll go to document again and just check C Monkey HTML editor graphic. It's got GIMP installed already. This is awesome. Vunier. I have not used this in a long time, but I believe it's a what was that? Earthen view kind of maybe thing like it's just it's really lightweight and it views just about any image if I recall co correctly but maybe I'm mixing it up with something else but Vunier was something I loved um, yeah it, it's a fast image viewer I believe yes it is great I can't believe I forgot about this I should start using that one again um, so this distribution is kind of reminding me of things I've used and I kind of forgot to use as I distro hopped um, I kind of feel bad. I neglected some of these awesome programs. Not that they give a shit, but I've been missing out. These I love the Xsane. That's another one. I mean, not many people use a scanner anymore, but, you know, they use their smartphones, I'm sure, but, you know, you might have a printer that's, you know, got a Twain scanner, Twain-capable scanner that you could install, and this thing's ready for you to use it. Uh, another big one is printing. Is there printing? We'll get to that, I guess, but that's that's a a big one for me if the distribution makes it really easy to install printers like Linux Mint unbeatable like how easy it is to install a friggin printer it's just click install done I mean it's easier than Windows um, GIMP being installed by default is awesome it's kind of got the old view where it doesn't um, single window it everything I like the single window mode because it's I guess more like Photoshop if you will let's close that and not go over to my other monitor and Screw up the video. Okay, so a lot of stuff here. My gosh. 
even a simple one. If you think GIMP is too robust and you just want to just do a simple, you know, Windows Paint experience, it's got it. MT Paint, apparently. I'd never heard of it. Okay, we got programming. We got a IDE, Integrated Development Environment, Interface Designer. Way above my head, I'm not qualified to talk or speak on those, I, but it's there. That's great. Maybe it'll point me in the direction of doing the you know using the right tools to get into that if I wanted to. That's kind of cool. So we got file system. My gosh, MTP browser. What is MTP? Media transfer. Oh yeah, like when you plug in a phone and you can select not to charge and to transfer stuff to it. That's right. Um, we got network shares SMB browser. Very cool because I've had hit or miss experience with that across different distributions, particularly Arch having trouble browsing Windows shares sometimes. But then in like, you know, maybe a Debian-based distribution, it just, it works. So maybe, let's see. Oh my gosh, it's scanning my network. That is terrifying. No, it's not. It's pretty cool. Let's see what it finds. 192.2. What? That 202. Maybe it's because I'm in host mode or whatever you call it in VMware. I don't know. I'm not going to screw with this. This is a dumb idea. I shouldn't have done that. Sorry for wasting your time. Next. Let's go back to file system. Rocks file viewer, bcrypt, file encryption, cloud disk, pmount, unmount drives, multi rename. Awesome. Never used that one, but I've used a uh, you know, bulk file renamer before. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh yeah, this is cool. Puppy Linux, man, or Fat Dog Linux, you're doing it. This is great. I am liking this a lot. This has more tools than my recovery setup that I use to boot and you know fix windows if it dies or try to recover a system that has a dying hard drive those still exist i run into those every once in a while uh we got file system let's uh locate find and run okay multi-rename yep okay so we've seen just about everything there cloud disk let's see what the heck this is web dev ftp real simple okay next file system okay utility archive manager maybe that's a front end for like 7-zip or something i don't know um, we already, I feel like I already saw that under another menu. Icon browser. Let's check that out. Is it easy to change icons? Or is it like an emoji copier? Icons. What the heck am I doing? What am I doing? I have no clue what I'm doing. Places. I give up. That's too much time for me. Let's go back to utility. Leafpad, I saw that earlier. You saw that earlier, probably. Minimum profit text editor. What in the heck is that? Minimum profit. Does that mean, is it like a distraction-free text editor? This is a text editor? And then, oh, wow, it's actually got a lot of options. Grep, find inside files. Very cool. That's geeky. I like it. Build project. What? I shouldn't be clicking these things until I read the instructions. Is that correct? I Wow, this is a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> I like that. Hexadecimal viewer. Okay, cool. Wow, that, that could be another one I could screw with after this video so I don't waste more of your time. Um, let's close that. Let's close this. I got so much distraction on here. Uh, okay. What is up with that menu hiccuping like that? Okay, utility. Yeah, uh, viewing your yeah, we see a lot of these re reappearing. Okay, let's go back here. These are more uh, Fat Dog sixty four specific. Yeah, setup. I saw these when I hovered over them earlier. G slapped package manager. It has a package manager. I don't remember if Puppy had a package manager fifteen years ago, or if it was just like you extracted things and like ran a script. I don't remember. I think that's how you might have installed them. But the fact that this has a package manager is pretty slick. Let's update this and see what we got. It runs quickly. Nice. Let's look for, um, let's try something like uh, Brave. I, I don't think that would show up here because it's not repository. Let's try, um, let's just do Firefox. We already know that it's installed, but is there any kind of like, yeah. Bleach Bit. Hey, Bleach Bit. Cool. Let's install Bleach Bit. That's a good one. While that's going, let's uh, click the menu and go to system or setup. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's doing Python now. Okay. That was pretty fast. 
Let's close that and see if BleachBit is under setup system. BleachBit, there it is. Cool. That was really easy. Ooh. So the repository doesn't have the latest version of the app, and I guess the app is calling it out maybe. So that's kind of a bummer, but whatever. Uh, maybe this distribution will get more popular and, I don't know, it'll get more updates. The, maybe it'll, <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I didn't check the repository, like what, service it's use, what server it's using. But anyways, um, let's go back to setup here. There's Fat Dog 64 control menu. Oh, so you click that and it brings up a menu on the screen. Third-party software installers. Okay, this is interesting. Update. Wow, this is kind of weird. It's like, oh, yeah, we forgot to do this. So here, here's some other options. No, there's um convert spot apps to root apps. I mean, this thing is just packed with, like, lots of customizations, and I still find it really kind of cool. Install fat. Okay, here's the, here's the installer to get this installed to your hard drive. I think I did see this earlier. Okay, cool. Uh, disk. Wow, it's just so much stuff here. I, this this could easily help you repair a computer. Network. Wireless antenna. SMB browser. A lot of stuff here. Internet tethering via USB. So cool. Very cool. I I really want to test this out on like a laptop as like a recovery thing where I can just plug in my phone and be like, okay, now I'm back online. I can get a browser and just get stuff done. If you know, if, if my computer takes a crap. You know, you don't need a hard drive in the computer. You could just run this live. And I mean, yes, you could do that with just about any Linux distribution, but all the tools included here with how lean it is makes this a win so far. I love it. So that's my my opinion on this so far. And I think that's probably my, yeah. I mean, I think I've seen enough to know that this is really cool. Redshift, isn't that in Linux Mint? Um, It's even got touchpad adjustments. So cool. Because I like to disable that a lot if I have a mouse plugged in. I like to just hard what, just turn it right off. Wow, a lot of stuff here. Okay, too much to talk about, right? Let's go back to setup. So we went to control menu. Now let's do Fat Dog 64 control panel. Now we are apparently at uh, Mac OS 9. OS, <laughs> I don't know what, what is <laughs> Windows 3.1. I don't know, Windows 95 maybe. Okay, okay. We're, we're, I, I'll take it. Get VirtualBox. I like that. That's, I mean, if you, you know, VirtualBox is all right. Um, System, Adobe Flash Player. What the hell? <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, we got, but it's there. That's cool. It's cool that it's an option, right? right? Um, NTFS Backup. Wow. Let's check this out. This is sweet, man. Nice work. Nice work, Fat Dog team. This is so cool. Let's go uh, read about their history. Fat Dog has a long history. Click here to view how Fat Dog was started and how it grew as the years passed by. Now, this is at the distro.ibiblio.org website where they have this Fat Dog website hosted. Um, let's see. I can paste the link. Or can I do it? Do it right into the. Let's try out the. It's a good chance to see how the web browser works in here. <laughs> Oh, this must be the the artist or the person that. Oh, let's do um, distro dot i b i i biblio dot org slash fat dog slash web. There it is. Bada boom. Okay, so right here is the history. This this is running really zippy. Wow. Fat Dog is a long history. Okay, so there we go. Fat Dog, uh, Kirk and James, 2008 to 2020, based on derived works from Puppy Linux. Barry Collar. Yep, that's the guy who created Puppy. Awesome dude. And um, can I have the Fat Dog logo? I think it's cool. I like it. I'm going to save that. I'm going to use it for my video. Sorry, guys. You can sue me. And I'll take it down or whatever. You can just, you know. Uh, we got, oh, yeah, here we are. BK Home, Barry Collar. This is cool. Very cool. All right, anyways, I'm babbling on and I'm not getting anything done for you. So I would like to thank you for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like it. Uh, have a great rest of the weekend. Bye.